Uh, recording video? Yeah. So. Okay. so what I wanted to do today, especially in class, is to run through all the ex uh, run through all the um, aspects of the assignment. So you get a full and complete idea of what is request of what is required in the assignment, and also um, how I'm going to mark it. So we're going to look at those two things. Um, were you guys able to look at the assignment question? Or assignment as a whole? Were you able I to read? look at this part. Yeah, good. So, Dominic, from your perspective, let's uh, let's look at uh, part A. Okay, so part A is the first assignment, and um, the task requirement. Let's. I'm going to read out from the top. So, first, you attend a speed uh, a team sporting event and complete a notational analysis of the sports performance. This is an observation, let me turn this on. This is an observation involving the study of movement patterns. Look at what the general movement patterns are within the sport. Are they a result of the passing, shooting, blocking, etc., Or are the movements due to a superior system, discipline play, or other variables? What does that mean to you guys? Dominic, maybe you can go first. Um, like kind of the pace of the game, I guess. But I think it's pretty easy to track like passing, shooting, and blocking. I'm not really sure what like a superior system and discipline. Play. Don't worry about that part just yet. Let's maybe start by choosing a sport. Yeah. What's a What's a sport of choice that you might go and watch? I guess do footy. Footy. In footy, what are the main components that? Uh, say an analyst would track in football in the AFL. Um, definitely kicks. <laughs> kicks. Hand passes. Hand passes. Um, I guess. Let's say blocking, but it's a, it's maybe a, tackling. Yeah, tackling. Yeah. All right. So we have kicks, we have hand passes, the handballing, and then we have tackles. What we're trying to gather is in that sport how the pattern of tackling or pattern of kicks pattern of um, handballs and then the pattern of uh, tackles and what does a notational analysis mean what about you Flipper? what do you think a notational analysis means Yes, or the parts of the game. Okay, so the analysis of the parts of the game. So in AFL, Dominic, what you might find is, all right, there's, <clears throat> there's kicks. You might then calculate, or you might then watch a whole game of footy and look at the number of kicks on in the first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, fourth quarter. And you start getting a pattern. You might then look at the whole game and look at handballs. First quarter, second quarter, third quarter, final quarter. And the number of tackles. First quarter, second, third, and fourth. That forms what you might do in, in, in the first part. So what we're trying to do is, as sports scientists, uh, as sports scientists, we're going to watch a game and analyze that sport. So you've just come up with four things. If, if everyone in that game or in that team improves those four things, there's a better chance of winning. Then you research for that sport in terms of AFL, the team or league norm. Is there, a comp is there comparative data you can draw on for this sport? Where can we draw comparative data for AFL, uh, for kicks, Handballs and tackles. And then you can just compare them, like, I guess standings on the team, like what's the difference between like the first place team and the seventh place team? So, like, yes. Even just like time, like where the ball is for a lot of the match, you can do that. You can. And when you're looking at comparative data, you, you can actually look at the AFL professional league and compare what you're looking at at a club level. Say you go and watch a club match and compare that to an AFL uh, standard. 
or the professional level standard. So this number two is all about the comparison to something research-based. Now in AFL, it is that, you know, you'll get so much data online from, um, from the AFL records, you know, the professional league records. And what you're then looking at is, here's my game that I went and watched, these are the elements I looked at, and here is what I'm seeing at the professional level. And comparing then apples with apples. What do you guys think so far? Does that sound okay? Any questions on the first two things? How did the uh, forum slip from the Sorry? No, it can be any sport that you want. You can choose any sport. <clears throat> you can choose any activity. In the past, I've had students who chose weightlifting. Okay, so they looked at weightlifting uh, in terms of an activity and then compared. Once again, it's to do with notational analysis, notational analysis for that sport or that activity. But always comparing it to the norms that are in the league or you I talk about professional research coming out more because at the professional sport everything is then uh, uh, written down or they there's the research there that's nominated everything so all of that information is there for you to then draw upon and then to compare okay number three you must record data such as passes, shots, tackles, and blocks in one match and use either a scatter diagram, frequency table, sequential system to analyze the team's performance. What does that mean to you guys? Yes. So coming back to Dominic's uh, proposal of watching an, a, a footy match, okay, you have four quarters and if it is the number of kicks in a sequential or a frequency table you have one quarter one quarter two quarter three quarter four and one two three four five kicks one two three three in the second quarter one two in in the third quarter and then a wonderful quarter at the end one two three four five six seven eight in the final quarter that then covers this part here now you can use a scatter diagram depending on what the um, <clears throat> what you're looking at this has gone off let me turn that back on good so you can do a frequency table scatter diagram or a sequential system depending on what notational analysis you're doing for your sport. In that AFL example, that's what I'm, you know, that's an example that can be used. Number four, produce the data in an appropriate diagram and write a 500 word report on your findings and conclusions for the coach of the team. So you become the sports scientist in this. You're watching a team, comparing it to the professional level, and then saying, hey coach, when you compare the data from my AFL team compared to the league norm, my, your, your team has a deficit of 27%, has a deficit of 12%. You're making things very objective there. And then saying, look, hey coach, the kicks were down 27%. Handballs were, when you compare handballs to the industry norm, they were on par. They, you know, there's only a 2% variation. But the tackles, there's a 50% variation. So, in conclusion, you know, to see an improvement in performance, focusing it on kicks, Focusing in on tackles could help your team. And that 
then is the report that you then provide. So the maximum, look, 500 words is completely fine. When you use things like diagrams, tables, and describe those tables, describe those diagrams, that's far better for even a coach. I mean, I'll be marking it, but we're creating this for a coach from a sports science perspective. Yeah. Any questions about that? Is there like any examples you have for that? <clears throat> like a proper report? Yeah, I guess. I'm not really sure what a, how a sports report would look like. Really like sports what, sorry? I guess sport report. Pretty much what I explained there is like a comprehensive report. Yeah. But I'm just talking through it. Yeah. Alright? Now, what in terms of the like the language use? Yeah, I get well, like the formatting as well. Yeah. That's all but I don't know. It's like a bit it's like understand the gist, but I'm good yeah. to see that. Let me show you how I'm gonna mark it. Yeah. And then that might answer that question as well, right? So that is what the question is asking of you guys. Now, the way I mark it, you want to know how I mark it because I have you know, criterion that I'll be looking at. So let me bring that up. <clears throat> Do you guys know what a rubric is? Yeah, what's a rubric, Tommy? It's just like the framework yeah it's a framework for me to mark so this is a rubrics yeah the rubrics itself allows me to see let me see if I can make this bigger rubrics if I go to the rubrics and I'll stand on this side. The first part, when you've written this up in a report, the first thing I'm gonna look at is to see, one, attending a team sporting event, complete a notational analysis of the sports performance. So in the report, you say, uh, as part of this, um, uh, as part of this assignment, I attended an AFL game between this club side versus this club side. And you can say, I'm the sports scientist for Yarraville Football Club, right? And then you say, you talk about the movement patterns that are based and that's important in AFL. We're talking about kicks, handballs, and tackles. You can say these are the important constituents that make up uh, a successful football game. And I'll be looking at all those three aspects that we mentioned. So during this game, we were looking at this, or well, I was looking at this. When you include the language that is part of my criterion inside your assignment, it's easier for the examiner or the assessor to mark. So I always tell my students, go and look at what the rubric says, because the key terminology is already sitting there. So for you to get strong or top marks, you want to fall into this category, which is getting maximum marks. Strong evidence of attending a team sporting event, strong evidence is, I went to this, uh, on this date, I went to this club game between this club and this club. It's pretty good evidence, right? Strong notational analysis of sports performance completed. Strong evidence of observation of movement patterns. The fact that you've broken up AFL football into these are the main constituent components to succeed in that sport, that's strong evidence. Strong evidence of movement pattern within the sport observed and outlined. Uh, and that forms under the first part. Next, research for your sport, the team or league norm. Is there a comparison data you can draw upon for this sport? 
yes, in AFL football, I compared this club, um, uh, I compared what happened at this club level to the data at the AFL professional level. And strong evidence of research for chosen team or team uh, league norms, strong comparison data drawn on for the chosen sport. AFL could be one. Now, with the AFL, there's actually a lot of research that is done in research papers. Now, if it's something to do with um, something to do with notational analysis in AFL football, that's in research papers and research articles. Include that. So you say I specifically looked at kicks uh, within. Uh, 50 meter, uh, within five to 10 meter kicks, I, uh, I was uh, looking at the notational analysis of short kicks versus long kicks. Because the data or the research in AFL showed that the success of a, a good game is the short kicks. I'm just making that up, but that's what you would come up with. And then in that you do a uh, in-text citation. Uh, you know, this author plus this author this year, uh, and then you put that as a reference at the end. Okay? So the in text citations here is quite valuable. Always back, always back up what you say, always back up what you say with in text citations. If I were to say, look, um, My club match between Yarraville and this other team, Yarraville, uh, I was calculating, I was looking at kicks, handballs, tackles, and in the AFL it says that's important. And there's only a reference at the end, that's not good enough. You need to put the in-text citation where you've made that statement. Because as you guys move through, uh, you know, going in, to further studies into academia, you, you have to back up every statement that you make. And people lose marks here when they don't have that in-text citation. So although this is a very small section, a lot of people miss out on top marks because of the lack of in-text citation. All right? So that's number two. Number three. You must record data such as passes, shots, tackles, and blocks in one match and use a scatter diagram, frequency table, or sequential system. So as soon as I see a frequency table, yep, he's done it. I'll go look into it more, but at least you've done it. And I can see that happening. So using that scatter diagram, or in this example, we were talking about a frequency table, quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, quarter four. I see it. You've laid it out in a nice table, done. And then you're talking about it is the next part. In the past, a lot of people say they've gone and done it, but they haven't shown it. So they said, oh yeah, I created this frequency table. Where is it? Or they say, yes, I calculated the frequency of the number of kicks versus, uh, you know, for each quarter. And this is, this is what I found, but they explained it. What this is asking is for a table. So make sure you answer what is in the rubrics. That's how you get the most marks. <clears throat> Number four, produce the data in the appropriate diagram. Uh, write a 500 word report on your findings and conclusions for a coach. So what I'd like to suggest is you put yourself in a place of a sports scientist, where you've gone and watched a sports club. You've identified the things that make that sport important or for that sport to succeed. And that forms everything in here. What are the movement patterns that are required in that sport? 
<clears throat> and then you say, when I compare your club match to the professional data or the research available, there is actually a 30, 40, whatever percentage deficit. And as you can see, you can create a table around that as well. And you can create a, uh, a, an image around that saying, here's my club and here's the professionals. And as you can, and as you can see, coach, these are some of the areas to improve on. And that's purely what this report is asking you to do. All right. How does that sound to you? Any questions that come up? I think we, I feel like it would be kind of hard to record like kicks in the game. Yeah. That's fine. That was just an example. Yeah, but like, I guess like even then like, cause like, they don't really record like, you know, the club games, right? So it's like, I guess, is that you? No, but you'll be attending a club game. Yeah, yeah, I know that, but like, are we making up the kicks then or are we actually the score? No, you can actually sit there, score, uh, you know. Yeah. Now, we're talking about all the kicks in this example, right? Yeah. You might actually say, I'm only going to count the number of kicks from the centre out into the wing or out into uh, the, the pockets. Right. Okay? Now, that's completely up to you because when you're looking at... Um, when you're looking at... Da, 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 where is it? Scatter diagram. It's a question. So say for example it's a scatter diagram. Or things like heat maps. Have you guys heard of heat maps? Yeah. What's a heat map, Dominic? Uh, it's like, well I mean it's like like a brighter colour where more of the action is happening. More of the action is happening, right? So what we're trying to do with this notational analysis is to see movement patterns and see where things are either going to improve or see where things need to improve or things need to balance out. So I've, I've used kicks as a broad example. Yeah. You, might, you might say, all right, in the forward pocket, the number of kicks, handballs, and tackles when the ball's in the forward pocket because then that could be data you look at for your club game versus what happens at the professional level. Now, look, I've got people who've gone and watched the whole match and they've calculated those things, but full match. How many kicks they've had, how many tackles, because it's only, in that example, it's only three broad categories. And you just sit there doing that for the whole match. But make sure whatever you're, te you're checking that is what is used in the league norms. Yeah. That's what's used in the professional sports. <clears throat> so I'd probably recommend you start at number two, work out if it's AFL, what is being used first. Now, any other questions on that? I want to add a last little bit. No. Anything for play? Are you thinking of any sport? Have you got a sport in mind? No. Golf? Okay, good. How would we use notational analysis in golf? Yeah, good. Now, in golf, you have the drive from the tee, you have a long game, then you have the short game. Okay, and then you have on the green itself. Now, in the professionals, you can, what do they calculate? They calculate distance for one. They calculate how many shots they took from the short game onto the, onto the, onto the, uh, the green. And then on the green, it's the number of putts necessary. So you can actually work out something about the regular golfer that you go and see versus what's on offer at the professional level. But make sure it sits under the no notational analysis 
and it's something to do with <coughs> something to do with the observation involving study of movement patterns, look at the general movement patterns that are within that sport, resulting in, say, passing, shooting, blocking, etc. In golf, it'll be either the long range shots, short game versus putting. Okay. Something else you can look at in terms of, we were talking about heat maps and things like looking at scatter diagram, uh, in this example would be in the professional leagues or professional players the data shows that they have they are always say let's say two meters from the hole when you go and watch your player after playing 18 holes you can then work out oh when they first got onto the green they were five and a half meters on average. So then to that coach, you can say, look, this person on average, on frequency for the 18 holes, missed the league norm each and every time, if they're a bad player. And this is part of the game that they can improve on. Does that help? Yeah. yeah? I didn't have to critique the player. You have to, sorry? Critique them, is that what you said? Yep. Um, what you're doing is, as a sports scientist, you're looking at a person doing that sport, comparing them to something that is uh, the league norm, and saying, yeah, look, you're either, congratulations, when I've observed you, you're actually better than the league. Or you can say, yeah, you, you fall below par. Usually that's the case. And yes, you are creating a critique for that person or you're providing that report for that coach to then help that person. <clears throat> now, another suggestion I have is this. Let's go to assignments. And assignment 1A. Oops, go to this. This question here another thing you can do <clears throat> if there's any part of this that you don't understand what can we do ask you. sorry you can, ask me. you can ask me I'm not all around all the time who else can you ask uh, hmm? what do you think Dominic uh, no like uh, basically help yeah, you can do all of that, right? You can even go to Google and you can put in what are examples of notational analysis for golf? What are examples for notational analysis for AFL? Okay, and you can ask that same question of Google. You can ask the same question of ChatGPT. I highly recommend you use things like artificial intelligence to help support you because artificial intelligence should be like a uh, study buddy. They're, they're there, the tools are there, the technology is there to make you a better scientist. And that's one quick way. So you can actually put in aspects of what is being asked of you and get that information because it'll help you understand the question more. You can also say, <clears throat> what is the comparative data uh, for notational analysis in golf when comparing it to amateur players and professional players? That gives you a solid baseline to go and when you, it'll give you some answers, you go and research it and then you've got what you're going to measure in that club game or that amateur that you're going to watch. <clears throat> so things like that, if there's any parts of the assignment you don't understand, you're either going to ask Google, you're either going to ask things like ChatGPT, use artificial intelligence to get that information. 
because it makes you a lot more, it'll give you the confidence in what is being asked of you. I certainly wouldn't tell, uh, I wouldn't, uh, I don't recommend getting ChatGPT or any other uh, thing to write the whole thing up for you because that gets picked up by the systems anyway. All right, that's, that's certainly a big no-no. And for me, you use artificial intelligence, you use technology in the same way to make you better. Sounds all right? Yeah. Good. Any other questions? You can choose any match, you can choose any sport. You're just going and viewing them once uh, and then you're comparing what you're watching to the industry norm. Okay. So this is due, I think, end of week, oh yeah, Sunday 30th of July. I think that's end of week five, I think. Yeah. Yeah? Good. Happy? Yeah. yeah. Happy? Yeah.